This is part 92 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss jQuery draggable widget. Draggable widget allow elements to be moved using the mouse. This widget belongs to interactions category. So on the jQuery UI website, notice draggable widget belong to interactions category. We also have other widgets in this category. We'll discuss these in our upcoming videos. Let's understand this draggable widget with an example. Here we have a div element with an ID. We also have applied a CSS class and here is that class. We have set the height to 200 pixels, width also to 200 pixels, background color red, font color white. We want this div element to be rendered as a table cell, vertical align middle, text align center. So if we apply this style class to this div element, this div element will be rendered like this. And we have this one line of jQuery code. So here we are finding this div element using its ID and on that we are calling the draggable jQuery UI function. So this is going to make this div element draggable, meaning we can move this div element around the screen using our mouse. I have this exact same code already typed. So if we view this page in the browser, this is how the page will be rendered. And notice now I can move this div element around the screen using my mouse. This draggable widget is extremely customizable and there are loads of options available. I have included some of the useful options here. Now, if you look at this div element, we can drag it in any direction. Let's say for some reason, we want to limit the direction in which we can drag it to x-axis. To achieve that, we can use this axis option. So this option constraints dragging to either X or Y axis. So let's go ahead and specify that option. So I'm going to use a JavaScript object and specify axis option. So I'm going to limit it to X axis. If you want to limit it to Y axis, just specify the value as Y. So let's reload this page and look at this now. I can only drag it along the X axis. Containment. This option constrains dragging to within the bounds of the specified element or region. So let's understand this option with an example. I have another div element here. So let's copy that and paste it on our web page. And I'm going to move this draggable div into this container div. Okay. And if you look at this container div, we have set the height to 300 pixels, width to 300 pixels, and we have set a three pixel solid black border. And this contain, uh, draggable div is a child of container div. Okay, so let's save our changes, reload this page, and look at this. This draggable div is present now inside the div element, and I can drag it. Look at this, actually, let's go ahead and remove the axis option from here. So we can drag it in any direction we want. Look at this. When I drag this, it's not going to stay within the bounds of this development with that thick black border. Now let's say for some reason when I drag it, I want that element to stay within the bounds of that outer development. We can achieve that using this containment option. So let's go ahead and specify containment and we can set this option to a string or a selector. So I'm going to set it to a string and I will set that to parent. So basically we are saying here, you know, when we drag this draggable div, make sure it stays within the bounds of its parent element. And what is the parent of that draggable div? Nothing but container div. So now when we reload this page and when we try to drag it, look at that the div element stays within the bounds of its parent. So we can set the value to a string or you can also set it to a selector. Okay, so to any jQuery selector. Now if you look at the parent element, it has got an ID. So I'm going to use jQuery ID selector. So I'm actually going to set it to hash container dev. Even now it's going to work the same way. It's going to stay within the bounds of the element with that div. Cursor, this option changes the CSS style of the cursor during the drag operation. 
And if you want to know what are the possible values for cursor option, it's a CSS style property. So if I type cursor here, notice I can actually see all the possible values for this uh, property. So let's say we want to set it to move. So let's go ahead and do that. So I want to set cursor option to move. Let's save our changes, reload this page, and look at this. As we drag the mouse, look at the cursor. It changes to a move handle. Opacity. This option changes the opacity during the drag operation. By default, the opacity is 1, but you can change it to any value that you want. Let's say, for example, we want to change it to 0 0.3. Let's save our changes, reload this page, and look at this. As we are dragging, look at that, the opacity of the div element that's being dragged is changed. As soon as we leave the mouse pointer, it's back to 1. Revert. This is a Boolean option that specifies if the element should revert to its start position when dragging stops. Now, at the moment, when dragging stops, the element will be placed where we stopped dragging. Now. When you stop dragging, that is when you leave the mouse pointer, if you want that element to go back to its starting position, then set that revert option to true. So I'm going to set revert to true. Let's save our changes, reload this page, and look at this. It goes back to its starting position. Revert duration, this option goes in hand in hand with revert option. So this option specifies the duration of the revert animation in milliseconds. The default value is 500 milliseconds. If you want to increase it for some reason, you can use this option. Let's understand these three options, snap, snap tolerance, and cancel with an example. So I'm actually going to copy this HTML that I have here. and. Let's paste it within the body section. And let's actually save the changes. And I'm going to change the selector here. I'm going to change that to div. And I'm going to remove this revert op uh, option. Let's save the changes, reload this page. And look at the UI here. We've got four colored divs and a div with a thick black border. Let's look at the HTML first. So the HTML is straightforward. So here we have a div class. We can actually remove this style from there, the background color style, because we are hard coding that style here. So basically, we are applying this class to all the colored divs. Okay, And then this is a red div, green div, blue div, and brown div. And we are setting the background color in line to that development. Okay, So pretty straightforward. And then we have two break elements, and then another div element. And the ID of this one is snap div. And look at this. We've set height to 400 um, and width to 400 pixels. And we have a 5 pixel solid black border. So this HTML produces this UI. Now look at this. I can actually drag the div elements. Look at that. It doesn't snap to the div element. I mean, to this div element with that thick black border. Let's actually let's reload this page once again. Look at that. When I drag the red div, it doesn't get snapped to the div element with that thick black border. Now let's say when I drag this element, and you know when it comes closer. Let's say, for example, when it comes to 50 pixels. You know, when the distance between the element that I'm dragging and this development with the thick black border, when it becomes like 50 pixels, then I want that to be automatically snapped to this development like that. Okay? To do that, we can use these two options, snap and snap tolerance. So let's go ahead and specify those options here. So I'm going to set snap to the ID of the element to which we want to snap the element that we are dragging. So we want to snap these colored divs to this div element. So I'm going to use this ID. So we are specifying a selector here. And I'm going to specify snap 
tolerance option and I'm going to set that to 50 pixels. So what does these two options mean? They mean when we drag these elements when they come like 50 pixels closer to any of the borders we want that element to be snapped automatically to this div element. Let's look at that. Look at this. I'm, I'm you know, moving this red div. As soon as it comes 50 pixels closer, look at that, it automatically gets snapped. The same is the case with green div. And look at that. As soon as it comes 50 pixels closer, it gets snapped. And the brown div, look at that. Okay. And you know, all these are div elements. And if you look at our selector here, we are saying div draggable. So even this element with the thick black border is also a div element. That means now I can drag that div element with that thick black border. Right? Let's say for some reason you don't want that element with that thick black border to be draggable, then you, you can use this cancel option. So basically this option prevents dragging from starting on specified elements. So let's go ahead and set cancel option. And I'm going to set that to a selector. So div draggable. This is going to make all div elements on this page draggable. But out of those div elements, I don't want this div element with ID snap div to be draggable. So I'm going to set that cancel option to the ID selector of that div element. Okay. So let's save our changes. Reload this page. And look at this now. I can't drag, you know, this div element. So now when we snap them, I can't drag any of the divs now because they are present within the bounds of this development with that thick black border. So that is preventing them from being dragged. Thank you for listening and have a great day.